Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. And hi, everyone. My name is Ming Wei. And I'm very happy to talk about uh, BERT pre-training of deep bidirectional transformer for language understanding. Uh, so word embedding has been shown to be very powerful uh, for initializing uh, deep learning models for NLP tasks. Uh, however, recently, contextual representation, where the model uh, computed representation not only through the word itself, but also the, con the surrounding context, has been proven to be more powerful than word embeddings. And so for the uh, contextual representations, um, there are two, many two ways uh, we identify for applying contextual representations which we are going to uh, discuss that in detail in the next two slides. Uh, so we call uh, the first approach the feature-based approach, and the most successful one is ELMO, where they train separate uh, left to right and right to left uh, language models uh, with shared parameters on the uh, unlabeled data. Uh, so the, for, for the fine-tuning task, uh, then apply, um, they first compute the contextual representation using language models, then use the uh, result as pre-trained word embeddings, or you can say them features, then just fit them into existing uh, models. So the other approach, uh, which we call then a uh, fine-tuning approaches, and we use GPT as our examples. So in GPT, uh, they train a, a deep 12-layer transformer models from left to right on, on, on label data, and for the downstream test, they simply reuse the language model as their final model by taking the representation of the last token to, be, uh, to fit into uh, output layer and to get the labels. So before we go on to discuss about uh, the BERT uh, and related issue, let's have some discussion about uh, these two approaches. So uh, the advantage of feature-based approach is that you can plug and play the embeddings. So you can train a contextual representation embeddings and generate them and treat them as features, then feed them to existing text models. So for example, you can compute ELMO embeddings and feed them into a BIDEF model to form a powerful uh, question answering system. So on the other hand, there's also advantage for fine tuning approaches. Uh, one of them is there are very few randomly initialized new parameters. And because of that, you might uh, suspect that one advantage is that when a uh, downstream test label data is not so, much, so many, then you might uh, have, uh, have a better chance to uh, learn a better job. The other thing is that it's conceptually simple because we don't have to do architecture search. However, uh, only, uh, because of that, there could be a pre-training and fine-tuning mismatch. So remember, for GPT, we are using a language model as our downstream task models, but uh, this model might not be the best choice for sequence taking or for uh, question answering task. So, uh, so here we're going to discuss in a different, think about this in a different way. So in prior work, basically, they focused on uh, pre-training with language model objectives. Then they tried to uh, integrate the language model into the downstream test models. For example, in ELMO, they carry over the language model uh, computation, com the representation as features for the downstream test models. In GPT, they simply reuse language model as the downstream test models. Uh, here, the design principle of BERT is we want to reverse again and thinking backward about what should we design for the uh, for downstream test model first. So that's what we say the goal-driven uh, designing. So we think about uh, what should be the most powerful and the general downstream test model we can use. Then we worry about what should be pre-training next. So our goal here is to uh, design, uh, to try to use deeply bidirectional uh, model as our downstream text models. So there are two properties that, that we want to use for our downstream test models. One is they should be powerful, and the other one is they should be general. So for, for, for powerful, we mean that they need to be, they want to, we want them to be deeply bidirectional in all layers, not just some layers. When we mean uh, deeply bidirectional, we mean that for uh, the output of every layer can be conditioned on both left and right context jointly, and not for just some layers. And we also want the, the model to be general uh, in here, we just uh, we reuse the trick that invented by GPT, where we can unify the self-attention and the cross-attention by concatenating the input together. Okay, now we have decided that's our uh, the the design for the downstream test model. How should we pre-train these models? 
And then we have the main challenge because language model objective does not work well for, for pre-training these such models. And we will discuss more about that later. So uh, that's why we're going to talk about BERT. BERT stands for bidirectional encoded representations from transformers. And we will use mass language model to enable pre-trained deeply bidirectional models. So you can think BERT as a combination of pre-training approach with deeply bidirectional models. And we show that that's, this framework uh, can, is very useful and can achieve stable of performance for 11 tasks with very little task-specific engineering. So let's talk about BERT. So following the same logic, we're going to talk about fine tuning first, and then we're going to cover how do we pre-train uh, uh, later. But uh, there are two stages of where BERT, uh, like pre-training is we do uh, pre-training on, on label data, and fine tuning we're going to do then on the label data. So this is the, um, the overall structure and input output for BERT. So BERT uh, uses a bidirectional transformer. So Bidirectional transformer, or you, you can call them the full transformer, or full transformer or transformer decoder, encoder, sorry, encoder, is a deeply bidirectional model, where every layers they condition on both left and con right context jointly. Also, uh, this is a contextual representation model, so every input token have a corresponding contextual representation vectors. And because um, we want to make, make this model to be applied to uh, as many tests as possible, we always representing the input as a long sequence. When there, uh, uh, for some tests, like you need uh, maybe two sequence, two, two text sequence, or a question and answers, we simply use a separator token to separate the sequences. So there's another reason why we use a transformer as our downstream test models. So people have shown that for certain tasks, attention between uh, two sides, for example, question and passage, has been important. So it has shown to be important. So when we use transformer as our downstream test model, we can also cover a, a, the attention mechanism between the two pieces of text. So here is some clarification for how do we use BERT. And so here, uh, assuming that we're doing a sentence pair classification, for example, we want to know if sentence A entails sentence B. So uh, for the input, we'll put a class label token, spatial token there, and we put all the tokens of sentence A. We put a separated token, then we put all the tokens of sentence B. Then we feed everything into a deeply bidirectional models, and then we use the representation corresponding to the class label tokens and add an output layer to, to make the predictions. So notice that while the, uh, the, lab uh, the representation for the class label is corresponding to the class label, it is uh, dependent on all other tokens, such that uh, the, we can rely on that to make the predictions. So for question answering, uh, we can use uh, the same logic, and we put a, a class label token, then questions, and then separator token, and then paragraph. Then we can put, put the uh, output layer on the representation corresponding to the tokens in the paragraph to indicate where is the start and the end of the answer. So uh, we finished talking about um, fine tuning, and basically, we think we, we want to make, to make uh, the fine tuning model to be uh, deeply bidirectional. And also, we want to concatenate the input sequence such that you can apply to uh, for multiple tasks. So now we're going to talk about uh, pre training. So, um, one of the, the most important questions that we have not answered is uh, why don't we just use a language model to pre train uh, the deeply bidirectional models? So if you look at uh, the left side, uh, where it shows uh, the unidirectional models, so in fact, um, language model objective is very good of training uh, unidirectional models. So for uh, language model, language model uh, objective, you are trying to use left context to, to predict the right word. So for example, you want to use the start of the sentence and the word open to, to predict the next word, which is uh, here. However, if you... Uh, when you move to the right, when you want to do deeply bidirectional models, now, um, now there is, um, and you simply reuse the same objective. Now, the model can simply peek through the future words and try to copy, try to predict the words. So in other words, if you do just simply using language model objective for the bidirectional models, the model will learn to copy words, rather than to learn from dependency between words. So uh, that's why our proposal is to use a mass language model 
where uh, the same idea has been applied to other contexts. So our proposal is to just mask uh, k percentage of input words and ask the model to recover those words. So for example, uh, the man went to the store, uh, man went to the mask and to buy a mask of milk. So we fit this into the uh, bird model and we ask the bird model to recover uh, the first word to be store and the second word to be gallon. So, um, so this is the overall framework uh, for BERT. So now we're going to talk about pre-training and then fine-tuning. So in pre-training, um, we're going to create this task uh, about mass uh, language model, and there's another task which uh, you can uh, check the paper for details, and to create a uh, pre-training task and then pre-train the model on the unlabeled data. Once you finish training on the un unlabeled data, then uh, we're going to copy all the prim parameters you pre-train on the unlabeled data to initialize your model for a downstream task. Notice that we can only do that because we are using exactly the same architecture between pre-training and fine-tuning. So now for the fine-tuning, you are using text-specific data to fine-tune your model and to finish the task. So when you have multiple tasks, you're going to use the same pre-trained model to initialize uh, different, um, the initial, initial model for different tasks and then use each different uh, text-specific data to, to fine-tune their models. So uh, I want to uh, mention some notes about the BERT framework before we go on. So uh, first of all, we always use the same model architecture for all tasks, including pre-training and all of fine-tuning tasks. The only difference is on output layers. Second, uh, we initialize all parameters from pre-trained models, so that not just word embedding, but all parameters on the, uh, on the transformer layers. The third one is we fine-tune um, all parameters in a fine-tuning stage. So even though you, if you only have three, several thousand of uh, label data, and we still fine-tune all uh, millions of parameters um, uh, for the BERT model. So let's check the result. So uh, here is the result uh, of BERT. So on glue, uh, we focus on a task, a task there, and there's a swag and the squad 1.1 and squad 2.0. So the first column shows the BERT result, and the second column shows uh, the prior state of the art. So we can see that a BERT achieved um, a pretty good improvement compared to prior state of the art, while prior state of the art using different architecture for different uh, tasks. Uh, so if you look at the, 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 this result, and we, we know like uh, BERT using almost the same architecture for all tasks, and so this doesn't mean that this architecture can be applied for all tasks. Okay, so this mean also only means that because we only apply on classification tasks and sequence taking and um, uh, question answering tasks, but this means that the fine tuning approach is more powerful than we, what we expected. Uh, so here is a comparison study that uh, we compare a bird uh, with uh, like left to right training of the same model. So uh, we are using the same uh, model size and uh, so the only difference is uh, the blue bar is trained with the BERT pre-training task, and the red bar is trained with a left-to-right language model. So this is basically similar to using OpenAI GPT train on our data. So for the uh, multi-NOI, where the, uh, the task is classification task, uh, the left-to-right model is a bit worse uh, than uh, the BERT. Uh, but for the right model, uh, well, for the squat model, then um, the left-to-right model is a lot worse uh, than the BERT model. So while you can try to add uh, like new parameters uh, on top of the left to right model, but those parameters are not pre-trained. So uh, this slide is also interesting. When on the left we have uh, on the right, on the left we have a big data set, on the right we have a small data set, and on the X axis there's the size of your models. So as we can see here, we go when the when we have a larger and larger model, we got a better and a better result. And this is surprising for the small number of label examples because uh, we used to think when you have large model, you will overfeed to the small number of label examples, but somehow the pre-training can overcome that issue. So this is the last slide of my talk. So basically, BERT is a pre-training approach that combined with deeply bidirectional models. So because we combine these two components, we can have a general architecture across uh, task on classification on sequence taking and on question answering. And it's also conceptually simple because uh, we don't have to do architecture search. And uh, so far, it outperforms uh, test-specific uh, designed models. So the codes 
and the models are available right now, and we also have multilingual models. Yeah. Thank you. Now it's on. Um, thank you very much. Uh, so you, you made this particular claims that uh, mask language model was instrumental to achieve all these results. And uh, why there are so many steps in the pipeline, so many parameters. And later, we know GPT-2 model came out, and they use sequential language model, and they claim even better results. So what exactly? You know, allows you to make this claim that, for example, mask language model is that important? Uh, so I think uh, uh, maybe, uh, let, let me make my claim again. So we're not, ask, we're not saying that mass language model is better than language model. We're saying that uh, we should think about pre-training as what the goal to achieve the better fine-tuning model. So we want our fine-tuning model to be a bi-directional model. And to pre-train that model, it is better to use mass language model. So that's our claim, yeah. Um, so, uh, so the ablation study shows a little bit, but only for the fine-tuning approach. So you can try uh, maybe larger model uh, left to right, turn on that things. But uh, it's it is we can okay. So we we should do more analysis on that. But uh, it is uh, in, intuitively that single direction model shouldn't shouldn't be uh, ideal for certain texts like question and answer, which where by that have shown that by additional attention is important. We have time for another question. Okay. okay. Have a take care. Sorry, there's one more question. Thanks for the great talk. Um, so, what what's next? Uh, so uh, this is a good question. Uh, so I think uh, right now, uh, in fact, uh, the prior talk about common sense and the uh, like multi-model approach are all very interesting aspect. Uh, we can do this. And uh, so I think that we should really think about what kind of capability we want to add into our model and then reversely think about what kind of pre-training we should do to enable that, those things. What's the name of the model, the next model? Um, maybe we should try to find some other names, yeah. <laughs> Well, let's thank the speaker for the talk. Thank you.